I wanted to uh, just briefly introduce the topic of today, which is on shape controlled nanocrystals. Now, the reason why we are interested in shape controlled nanocrystals is because this field has actually many opportunities. Control of shape, we control, can control optical properties, we can control catalytic properties, we can even call, control magnetic properties. And um, I, I thought it was a say, nice opportunity to do a bit of a, a recap of the field, because if you look at it, you know, um, we have all these different exciting materials that we can make. And as of now, the field is already more than 20 years old. So you see here in the beginning, to in the year 2000, uh, the group of Alvisatos actually showed for the first time that quantum dots could not be synthesized just as dots, but also as nanorods and tetrapods. And what was nice is that you had a first indication now how the ligands play a crucial role in defining the anisotropy. Because by using strong, strongly absorbing ligands, they could drive the, uh, the synthesis not towards dots, but for the first time also create these nanorods. What was also nice was that uh, very shortly after, uh, the Weller group demonstrated that you can't do this in uh, just single composition nanocrystals. You can also make core shell nanocrystals. And for instance, you can impose anisotropic properties on a cadmium selenide core, which is essentially spherical, by growing an anisotropic cadmium sulfide rod. You can see here that, for instance, the fluorescence becomes strongly polarized. Of course, many developments follow thereafter. And I think uh, another very uh, important milestone was the years 2006 and 2008, when the groups of Hian and Dubertre uh, showed that rods are not the only shape that you can make. Here, uh, in this year, they demonstrated that you can also make two-dimensional nanocrystals. And I think this uh, gave another very strong boost to the field because now for the first time, you see here in these images on the right, the fluorescence became very, very narrow to the point where it's only influenced by thermal broadening. And this is because we have now at this point, monodispersed nanocrystals. All across the ensemble, they're uniform in thickness. And the talk of uh, Andreas Riedinger today will show you a little bit more what we can do with these nanoparticles. So later on with these 2D nanoparticles, you can also make, just as you do for ketsonide, ketsulfide rods, you can make core shell nanoparticles. And here what was very interesting is that in 2012, the groups of uh, Talapin and Dubertre more or less simultaneously show that you can coat ketsulfide with a ketsulfide shell. And here you find more or less what you expect. By coating it with a ketsulfide shell, you create a so-called quasi-type 2 structure which leads to a strong redshift of the absorption and of course also the fluorescence properties. But then one year after, the group of Artemyev demonstrated that you can also exclusively grow a uh, second material around the edges of the nanoplatelet. And in this case, you don't grow it in the direction of strong quantum confinement, but you only grow it around the edges where uh, only weak confinement uh, applies. And in contrast with the redshift that you observe here, you see that in this case, you don't have any redshift and you maintain even a very fast fluorescence lifetime. So what's intriguing about this situation is now that as of these years, you can now for the first time also start to control here the quantum confinement properties by growing anisotropic structures, either concentrically or only laterally. Just to mention also, <clears throat> the growth of these nanoparticles was, say, uh, a bit of a mystery until recently, but then the group of Norris showed that these nanocrystals actually maintain their very nice 2D monodispersed thickness by growing them under so-called kinetic conditions. This means that the edges grow much faster than the thickness, which leads indeed to this uh, situation where you have a uniform thickness of one to two nanometer platelets which are then extended laterally in size. So this also strongly contrasts with the growth method 
of growing nano rods where you were relying on the fact that you hinder the growth or along the radial direction by using strongly absorbing ligands. So again, using these different shaped nanocrystals, we're now also try, starting to understand much better how to grow nanocrystals of different size and shape. Of course, history repeats itself. Um, there was 20 years of work done on shape controlled, say classical uh, two six semiconductors, but also the more recent field of perovskite nanocrystals saw a very rapid development. And as of today, you see you can also grow quantum dots, nanorods, cubes, and platelets. And the talk of uh, Alexander Rudban today will shed some more light on this field of perovskite nanocrystals. Now, these were all semiconductors, but also metal nanocrystals can be synthesized with different shapes. And in this case, a field which is also more than 20 years old, the important aspect is that you can then start to tune the plasmon resonance. You can do this with gold, but you can also do this with silver. And by uh, growing silver, you can do this by using a laser, actually. So in the, in the shape control of silver nanocrystals, what people typically do is they shine light with a certain wavelength. The uh, nano, uh, nanocrystals absorb this through their plasmon resonance, and then you can see they can grow preferentially until this plasmon resonance shifts outside of the illumination bandwidth. And hereby, in this case, for instance, growing nice triangular nanoplatelets. By using different wavelengths of light, you see that you can grow a whole variety of different shapes of silver nanocrystals. And as a consequence, also these different colors, which you get via tuning of the plasmon resonance. And in the, third, uh, the, the first talk of today by uh, Professor Buonsanti, we'll see a little bit more how to understand shape control in copper nanocrystals. Now, what I particularly liked about um, having a say look into these different fields is that at some points these fields actually started to merge a bit um, because again very early on you see that you can make also another semiconductor copper sulfide into different shapes but then about 10 years later the MANA group demonstrated that these discs that you have in copper sulfide they actually are plasmonic and they're plasmonic because they have a very high density of defects so they become, say, uh, metallic in nature. However, the merger comes when you realize that you can also apply a third growth mechanism of nano nanocrystals, which is cation exchange. You can actually take these plasmonic nanocrystals, in this case, this is uh, the example of copper telluride, and then replace all the copper by cadmium in a cation exchange reaction. And as you can see, the result is that you get semiconductor and isotropic nanocrystals, with in this case, bright red fluorescence. So you see, both fields are actually, say, very familiar to each other, and they're coupled through this uh, effect that you can do this cation exchange reaction going from a metal to a semiconductor nanocrystal. Now, just to finish, I also don't want to uh, ignore all the other types of nanocrystals and just show you a brief slide that even in oxide nanocrystals, you have, say, important shape effects which can play a role. Uh, this is a paper of more than 10 years ago where they produced manganese oxide of different shapes. And this can, for instance, have in important consequences for catalysis, where the nature of the surface, of course, determines the catalytic properties of those nanoparticles. And then finally, we already saw an introduction uh, just before. Uh, here, the group of uh, Wolfgang Heis and actually Maxim Kovalenko here also synthesized iron oxide with different shapes and demonstrated that if you make cubes, for instance, they have substantially enhanced magnetic properties compared to their spherical counterparts. <laughs>